we don't talk about failure enough. Who here loves to fail? Okay, thank you for your honesty. <laughs> Who here dreads it? Right, yeah. So it isn't a badge of honor. We don't put on our resumes, we don't slap up on our wall, and we don't write in our holiday letters, if you still do that, my mom totally still does that, our failures, right? We put our accolades out, we put our accomplishments out, our title changes, all the great things that we've been a part of, but failure is often left out of that equation. Friends, if we are not embracing failure, and yes, I said embracing failure, and that is hard to do and hard to say, but if we are not owning our failures, embracing our failures, and truly examining our failures, we are missing out on the most amazing successes, because how can you truly understand success if you don't also understand why you failed in the first place? And my friends, I have a long and glorious history with failure, and I own that because every single person in this space also does. How many of you knew how to tie your shoes when you were born? Or drive a car? Some of you still can't drive cars. <laughs> you didn't know how to speak your language. You didn't know how to write. We all had to learn these things and we all tried and we all failed. And that's why failure to me is such a universal topic. Everyone's gonna do it a lot. And I think it's really important that we understand that and that we embrace it and we talk about it. So join me, if you will, as I share with you a little bit of failure in my life. Uh, and we're going to start when I learned to ride a bike. So it looked something like this, right? Six or seven years old, maybe a little bit younger. My parents, we were living in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. I don't know if you're familiar with that. There are hills in Mechanicsburg and bikes, not great. So it was time for me to learn to take the training wheels off. So I put on my helmet. My parents line me up on the sidewalk, and they push me. And I remember saying, are you behind me? Are you behind me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they weren't. They pushed me right into a rose bush. Why my parents decided to line our entire driveway and all the adjoining sidewalks with rose bushes, I will never know. But I can promise you, I remember distinctly every single time I fell into those suckers. But after the crying, after getting the boo-boos kissed, after the band-aids, hopped back on the bike, kept on trying. And my friends, I'm a successful failure because today I stand in front of you and I can ride a bike. Woo! But the lesson is, I tried and I failed. And at six or seven years old, I didn't realize that that was brave. But every single time you try and maybe fail, that's brave. I would wager that we could probably look back on our lives thus far and probably tick off in our lives the failures and the successes that we've had, right? And, and this is just literally a line. This is not how I necessarily see my life. Sometimes your successes are through the roof. Sometimes your failures are higher. Sometimes they parallel, sometimes they intersect. Life happens. I like to believe that the only true failures are the things that you don't learn from. And the things you don't learn from are what become your regrets. Now I want to be very clear, I'm using the term failure, and I know some folks don't like that term, it's a little bit harsh, but I want you to think about, again, that, that relationship between success and failure. And I challenge each of you right now to recall a failure in your life. And I say this too, it's your interpretation. We're not here to qualify whose failure is the worst failure. Stop that, we're not doing that. Everyone's failure and the way you experience your life is valid. Someone's success might be someone else's failure. Right, life is hard and we're in it together. We should be in it together. But I want you to hold on to that as we're going through this. The lens that I'm gonna to utilize to talk about my experience with failure is that of a job search. Timely, right? Where are my TPE folks? Woo, I know, we're tired, right? We've been here a long time, long time. All right, all of us I'm assuming have job searched at some point because we're here, we're employed by our institutions. Some of us are just starting out. Some of us are VPSAs. 
leading the way for our profession. We've all gone through job search, and it is hard. And guess what? I failed in my job searches. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about those. So join me on this roller coaster ride, right? When I embarked about two years ago on a very intentional job search, I was looking for the next professional step. Um, I figured the experiences that I've had, the networks I've created, were surely going to help me in that. My job search did not go the way I thought it was going to go in my head. So the first theme of my job searching experience came up. Second place can suck. Oh, it sucks. You don't believe me? We just finished up the Olympics, right? Who is the least excited person to be on that podium? Second place, right? Because they're so close to that gold. Right, you can taste it. It's sometimes that quick. Second place can suck, and it's okay to say that. There's no shame in it. You're still on the podium, you still got there. But in my experience, I was getting job uh, searches, and I would get a call, and it would go something like this. Hi, Debbie. How are you doing? Yeah, we wanted to let you know, we think that you are an amazing candidate. Um, you actually were our top two. We have two really highly qualified candidates. It's you and another person. We have gone with the other individual. Awesome. <laughs> Great. What do you say to that, right? So, I mean, it's flattering. It's great. Again, I made it to the podium. But dang it. Didn't get that gold. And it's okay, friends. In your journey, second place, it's not something to be ashamed of, but ugh, it can be a hard thing to swallow. And when that happens multiple times in a job search setting or a life setting, it can tear you down. So it's really important, I think, that you're building up your resiliency and your grit if you can. Surround yourself with people who love you, who can support you, who can talk you through it. Second theme of my job searching experience. I was intentionally searching. I was flying out to Michigan. I was flying down to Florida. I need to pick a climate zone and stick to it. And I arrived at this campus that I loved. And they loved me. And I get back to my campus and they say, hey, we want to bring you back down and we want to fly out and we want you to meet with our president because you're our top candidate. And oh, by the way, you know that director position that you applied for? We would like to offer you assistant dean instead. How does that sit with you? That sat great with me. So I flew back down to this location and I met with the president and I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but something felt different about that on-site experience. When I returned to campus, I found out that actually all positions had been frozen and they were going through a campus restructuring. So that position, gone. Completely out of my control. But sure felt like I did something wrong. And that was a defeat that I really struggled with in terms of my self-worth as a professional, the hopes that I had for what that would look like for myself, for my family. My current position was absolutely getting ready to bid me a fond farewell and throw me a beautiful party with cupcakes. Completely out of my control. And sometimes that's life. When it's out of your control, there's nothing you can do. That can be tough. The third theme that I developed through my job searching experience is sometimes, and this is what you're going for, right? That's the obvious point of a job search. Sometimes you're number one, right? You want that job. That's the point, Debbie, duh. But I equate this one to being invited to a party where you have interviewed at a position and you like it, but you don't love it. It's like going to a party and being the person sitting on the couch. You're there, but you're not dancing. I was fortunate enough to receive offers in the course of my job search, but the idea of fit came into play. And was this something that I wanted to be at long term? And that's nothing against the position, that's nothing against the folks that are at those those uh, institutions, but for you in your job searches and in your life, sometimes things are good, but they're not great, and that's not exactly what you want. And you have to weigh out in your life, do I pick this thing because it's there, or am I brave and I hold back and I try something else? And so for me, even though I had an opportunity, I had to say no thank you. And that's really hard and scary to do. But this is the big one, friends, this one right here. What you do with these unexpected experiences and these opportunities of failure, that is what matters the most. It is not about sitting there and wallowing. It is about, okay, this did not go the way that I wanted it to go. 
Now what? Like I said, every single person in this room has failed, will fail. I am going to fail in my life many times. I'm a parent, it's 100% guarantee that most everything I'm about to do in my life with my children, they will see as a failure. And my six-year-old who is going on like 17 will remind me. But what you do with it is what matters, that's the important thing. In my job searching experience and why it was important for me, I got great networks. Even though I didn't necessarily go to the jobs that I interviewed for or were offered to me, I made connections. They are fantastic colleagues. I've expanded my base. I just as easily could have said, they didn't want me, so I'm never going to talk to them again. But friends, our field is small. We are on the same team. And you never know when you need to pick up that phone and make that call to the institution that didn't hire you, but has the exact same experience that you need information on. So for me, it was an amazing opportunity to meet people and to network and to connect. And so this is my closing to you. I challenge each and every one of you in here to be brave and to try and to fail and to embrace it and to own it and to grow from it. Don't allow your failures to become your regrets. Allow your failures to be that fire inside of you to fuel you on. Thank you.